It being nine o'clock, um, we'll have the meeting called to order. Um, I don't see any public that has arrived yet, but perhaps later. Uh, Jerry, could you take the roll call and report a uh, quorum is present? Yes. Okay. Um, approval of the November 27th meeting minutes. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, the minutes are approved. As printed, uh, approval of the agenda for today. You have a motion for approval? So moved. Okay, uh, motion's been made and seconded to approve the agenda. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, same, opposed, same sign. The agenda's approved. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, remember that what, uh, before you vote on it, we have to have discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. I Thank mean, you. if there is anything to discuss. Right. Yes, okay. of course. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, okay, next item is a consent calendar. And PJ, if you could go over that for us, please. Sure. PJ, kind of a director of planning department. Uh, consent calendar. The following items have been placed on the consent calendar for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any items be removed from consent calendar by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of the Planning Commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item three, conditional use permit review 1231 for Nina McBride, Sandra Varney, to review a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1231 with six conditions. Item four, conditional use permit review 1641 for Robert and Glenda Frank to review a recreational vehicle to be used as temporary living quarters while building a single family residence on the subject property in a low density residential district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1641 with 14 conditions. Item five, conditional use permit review 1642 for Chase Gravett to allow for a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence in a general agriculture district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit 1642 with nine conditions. Item six, minor plat 1745 and subdivision regulation variance 1715 for Josh and Lindsay Richardson to reconfigure lot lines to create track 52 revised and track 53 revived of Spring Creek Acres subdivision and to waive some planning requirements. Staff recommends approval of subdivision variance 1715 and approval of minor plat 1745 with six conditions. Thank you. Any to be removed by the staff? Nothing, ma'am. Sta planning commissioners? And uh, there's no, no one in the audience. All right, so we'll take one motion to approve the consent calendar, which includes items three, four, five, and six. So um, moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All right, uh, hearing none, all in favor? Uh, for approval, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Hearing none, motion is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number seven. Frank Weisseth, Planner 2. Item seven is a major plan unit development amendment, 17-09 by Bighorn Canyon Ministries. Their request is to amend an existing plan unit development and to change the use of the subject property. Um, the property is the... <coughs> Old Governor's Mansion on Anderson Road. <clears throat> the desired uses uh, include, let's see, um, traditional uh, Christian services, weddings, um, youth, children activities, um, Bible classes. So they have uh, transformed the existing house to use as office and classroom space and have plans to build a new building on the site of the foundation next to the building there, which would be their primary sanctuary. Also intend to use the pond for recreational activities and the rest of the grounds for camping, uh, campouts, football, um, softball, soccer, those kind of games as well. Um, have ample parking available on the site depending on where they want to configure it. Um, there's their floor plan. Staff does recommend approval of the major planning and development amendment with 22 conditions as listed.
think. Madam Chair. Yes. Um, the, <coughs> the area photo that you have, um, that big white thing, like southwest of the pond, is that like a tent or something? Do they have tents sometimes? Uh, right here? Yeah. Um, or is that, that the foundation? The, that's the foundation. So I believe the okay. previous owners used that as a site for large tents for okay. events. Um, but the church, these applicants owners now are intending to use that to build a, put a building there. Okay, thank you. And they may use tents temporarily for other events, but that would require okay, temporary thanks. building permits, but it should be fine. So I'll entertain a motion for approval. Uh, I've, I've got something I'd like to ask about on <clears throat> condition 12, that yes. all music be provided for outdoor activities be shut down by 10 p.m. I'm just wondering about the 10 p.m. if that comes out of zoning ordinance or is that just kind of a standard number because I know the for example like summer nights finishes at 9 why 10 um, 10 o'clock was used for as a time limit for the previous PUD and 10 to 7 would be kind of typical quiet hours when we do do it that's the number that we usually will use unless somebody wants something different and as far as I know we haven't heard any um, about it. No, the yeah, I confirmed with the uh, applicant when there I there hasn't been any complaints in that area about music ever. Not that Not we're that aware, aware of. of. No, no, nope. seems very close but, uh, to a lot of residential places there. So to me, ten seems a bit late. Don't know if anyone else would feel. Mr. The same. Chair, is, Mr. is that? Chair. Oh, sorry, Madam Chair, sorry. <laughs> is that um, is that typically the time we use for vacation home rentals too? For quiet hours? Yeah. It's traditionally quiet hours. We don't have anything in writing that says okay. it other than just... Because, again, I'm thinking it's a little early. Because if I'm having a reception there, I might not want to turn the music off till midnight, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something like that. I'm all 2 o'clock kind of late. Midnight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, maybe... I was thinking maybe more like 11. Well, one commissioner wants it earlier. <laughs> well, I know. That's, yeah. you know, it's I up mean, to you guys to... You know, but, yeah. you know, if, do, if they plan on doing things like weddings and stuff, I mean, 10's kind of early for a wedding reception. If you turn the music off at 10, everyone goes home. Mm -hmm. Or they stand there and drink, and then they drive home, which is bad. Yeah. Madam Chair, if they leave early and they're drinking and driving, it probably gives them two more hours to drink then. So I'm just teasing. Well, that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. I mean, you know. I, um, well, I'd suggest that we, we make them, um, we have a, get a motion on the floor, and then we can have some discussion, and then... Um, uh, if there's a you know, an amendment to change certain things, then go ahead and we'll make some. Uh, we'll make an amended motion to change a condition if that's the the wishes. So, good point, Madam Chair. Yeah. So, did did you move approval? Yes. Oh, thank you. I need, <laughs> I need a second. A second. Second. Thank you. All I right, do. Now I do have a question. Discussion. Now. Yes. They, I take it they have looked at all these conditions. What was that? They've looked at all these conditions. Mm -hmm. And approved them, mm -hmm. and ten o'clock was okay with them. Yeah, <coughs> so I, I used the conditions that were for the previous recreational resort as a starting point and discussed some of those that would be applicable with the applicant when I met them. So, Thank you. Yeah, they were fine with ten o'clock. Had quite a few meetings with them over the last few months, Madam Chair. Yes, um, and that was why I asked, honey, just in case there was some complaints already, since they've had the music and everything going before, and if there was. Or there be reason for concern, but it doesn't sound like there was. So, okay. I have a different thought. But. I was mostly just interested in where that 10 o'clock comes from. They didn't ask for 10 o'clock, it's just a number that you guys come up with, and they said okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I confirmed yeah, that since it had been used previously and for other, for other PUDs and similar properties. Not seriously concerned about it, just interested. Mm -hmm. okay. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approval um, the, with the, the recommended um, action with these conditions, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, those opposed, same sign. Okay, motion is carried. Thank you. We're on item eight.
morning, Amy Rittering, Planner 1. Um, agenda item number 8 is for a minor plan unit um, development amendment um, to amend the existing planned unit development to allow a single wide mobile home as a dwelling unit on the subject property in accordance with Section 213 of Planning, Pennington County Zoning Ordinance. The applicant, uh, Cliff Janice, is not here. So um, the address and site location is 22961 Radar Hill Road um, at the intersection of Longview Road and Radar Hill. Um, the subject property is 11.48 acres um, and it currently resides in a planned unit development district. Um, staff will be recommending the approval of minor planned unit development amendment um, with 11 conditions. The applicant, Cliff Janice, is requesting a minor planned unit development amendment to allow a single wide mobile home as a dwelling unit in an existing planned unit development amendment, or I'm sorry, planned unit development PU0105 on track to KWA subdivision. Um, the existing conditions, planned unit development PU0105 was approved by the Board of Commissioners on January 2nd, 2002 to rezone um, northeast quarter, southeast quarter of Section 1 Township 1N Range 8 East 40 acre lot uh, from General Agriculture District to planned unit development with the following 10 conditions. Um, key ones to note from these 10 conditions were there were a maximum of 51 dwelling units to be constructed on the 40 acre parcel. Um, there were a maximum of 10 acres to be utilized for neighborhood commercial uses. These neighborhood commercial uses um, were limited to convenience stores, gas station facilities, outdoor storage and closed storage. Um, follows through as item number seven on that list. Um, then on December 27th, 2001, Tract 1 of KWA subdivision was created from the 40 acre parcel through the city of Box Elder as the property resided in the Box Elder platting jurisdiction. Below is the plat, um, which these are the two plats that created the tract two from that 40 acre parcel. Um, and then on December 23rd, tract two was created, which is the subject property we're discussing today. Um, the remaining acreage is unplatted. Um, Lot, so track two, um, the lot contains a 14 by 70 single wide mobile home with various additions per DOE records. Um, building permits will be required as conditions of approval. Um, this amendment was routed through the interdepartmental review. Key areas for concern came from the county addressing coordinator and emergency services 911. Um, if this is approved, um, the address does need to, or the property does need to follow Pennington County Ordinance Number 20, um, with addresses being posted at the driveway and Radar Hill, as well as on the single wide mobile home. Um, County Highway Department also stated that the existing approach must be used. Um, for the analysis section, on December 1st, 2016, Ordinance Enforcement issued an ordinance violation for placing a single wide mobile home on the subject property without obtaining an approved minor unit, planned unit development amendment and building permit. Um, there was a septic permit issued through the city at that time. Um, on October 24th, the applicant did file a minor amendment to allow for the single wide mobile home as a dwelling unit on the property. Um, November 28th, staff did conduct a site visit um, to verify that the address was placed at the entrance of the driveway. However, staff could not verify that there was an address placed on the mobile home. Um, the uses of a single wide mobile home as a dwelling unit is in harmony with the intent of the planned unit development PU0105. Um, and then on November 30th, 2017, staff received confirmation from the city of Box Elder that the subject property does have a permitted one inch water tap. Um, this is extremely relevant in that this tract is just to the west or the east of Valley Heights, which is under a water moratorium. These three lots do fall under that same water moratorium. So the one tap is the only water that will be issued currently as it stands today. Um, there's going to be no further water tabs or upsizing of the line will be permitted. Um, so staff will be recommending the approval of the minor planned unit development amendment 1710 with the following 11 conditions. 
Thank you. Um, we did receive a letter um, in objection of this um, from a Mr. Chad Hardy. Um, you do have it, I believe it was given to you outside, uh, didn't make the packet. Um, basically, I believe their concern is that they don't wanna have multiple mobile homes on these lots. Um, this amendment is just for the one, it's to bring the property into compliance as it stands right now, there's not going to be any more taps going out there. So to put multiple mobile homes, it's not realistic at this current moment in time. Um, and it's also not what the applicant is wishing to do. So just to answer to that objection letter, that's where that is. Okay, thank you. Um, any questions? Well, I'll entertain a motion to approve and then a second and then we'll have a discussion. So I'll, I'll move to approve with the recommended conditions. Do I have a second? I'll second for discussion. Second, thank you. All right, now for discussion. Go ahead, Deb. Yeah. Madam Chair. Yes? Um, can I ask a question? Um, the, um, the condition there that talks about number five, that a maximum of 51 dwellings will be conducted on the 40-acre parcel. Mm -hmm. um, since you were talking about the water issues, is that really ever going to happen? No, and this is one of those... Um, so maybe it should go Staff away. needs to um, review this. It's a minor amendment. We can't go in and just oh, okay. remove them. We can okay. only add what the applicant is asking for at this current moment in time. So this is, we've discussed as an office that this minor plan unit development needs to be overhauled and reviewed. Okay. Um, and a major amendment needs to come forward. So um, there is a nice letter being sent out to the landowner who... Well, and I suppose in the future they could identify a potential water source. So, Correct. Yeah, there, yeah. That is that, uh, there is that option as well. Um, so you can do that. Um, I had one other question. From the photo, you have a photo of the, the dwelling? Yes. Um, it's, you know, um, the, the letter and objection, you know, talks about how they don't want mobile homes there. Um, it looks like it's fairly neat and well maintained. Um, is it, you know, does it look like other mobile homes or single wides that you see in other parts of the county? You know, as far as aesthetics go? Tough to answer. <laughs> um, I, I, as far as aesthetics know. go, he really, um, it, it does kind of coincide with what you typically see within the county. He does do a fairly good job at keeping it neat and orderly. Um, I mean, to me, it almost looks like a, a real contemporary, modular looking home, you know? Together. Yeah, you know, just pieces of it. You know, it's real contemporary looking. I mean, it doesn't look, you don't see chunks of stuff hanging off of it. It's got, you know, I, I, it doesn't look bad. Just wondered. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Madam Chair. Um, again, on the water source, east of where Valley Heights is, are they covered by Box Elder for the water or no? So they, um, so... I did print those emails so that way I knew this question was going to come. Their water account and billing is for is for the water is through the city of Box Elder. Right. So and it's not in the city limits, Miss Amy. No. So they're going that water tap is coming from the same source as Valley Heights. Correct. It? That water tower. I. Yes. Yes. So are we, are we PJ? Are we adding to the issue by the? Saying Valley Heights can't have them, but people east of them can. He did uh, pay for. The building's been there for what, two years? Two years. It's been there for two years already. We're just trying to. If, so if you were to deny it, uh, you'd have to remove the single wide. Okay, but he's had the single wide there before. Tell Long me, before, and, and he has apologize. a current tap. I didn't get a read up on this. because Correct, can't. yeah. So what's on the property today is a single wide, and he didn't get a building permit for it, but he has one now. He has applied for it, hasn't been issued anything yet. Okay, but it's already, this mobile home's been there. So here's what, the applicant yes. applied for a septic permit through the city. Okay. He was told he's all good to go as long as he got a water tap. So he got a water tap, he got a septic permit. Okay. And then about a year later, um, our ordinance enforcement got a phone call, hey, there's a single white out there without a building permit. It got flagged from you know, one of our lovely complaint forms that we get. And so our ordinance enforcement went to go and investigate. And that's kind of how it's, this whole thing has come to fruition. Um, it's, the single white has been there for two years. 
Um, this is just really trying to bring the property into compliance. The water tap has been there. It's been paid for. So to deny him would be telling him. You have to move and find a new place of land to, to live on. Okay, I get it. And, so, and, <coughs> excuse me, Madam Chairman. Yes, go ahead. And he's operating under the formula that we use at the county commission. It's much, much easier to get forgiveness and approval. And we do that all the time, which we're doing again now. Well, with the tap being, oh, Madam go Chair, ahead. with the tap being there and the septic being there, um, I guess that's the difference for me. And the city of Box Elder telling him he's okay, right? I mean, Are that, they saying it's okay? I mean, didn't you say that, that, that when he got his septic and they said you need to get a water tap and then they said, okay, you're good to go. It was the city of Rapid City. Oh, city of Rapid City, sorry. Yeah. Septic. Yeah, sorry. Septic. Yeah. Permit. And the water tap was given when? What was the, sorry, Madam Chair. Oh, go, no, go ahead. A year and a half ago. Okay. So, be, so before the time that the two building permits that we approved in Valley Heights got their tap, so probably a year before that. But I outlined parts of parts of Valley Heights on that. Zone Madam Chair, just so you guys know where as much are. as I'd like to shut people's stuff down for not complying, you built yourself a whole house. I'm like, I don't. What are we going to do? Say you can't live there anymore. Um, bottom line is, is I don't know what we can do as a county because this is happening. Ask Mr. Musgrove and you guys a lot more where we're finding people that just aren't caring. So um, until, and I should say that, not caring. Some people don't truly know on some of this, but that's pretty obvious. So what do we do to make a difference on it? I mean, that's the bottom line. What can you do to make sure people are complying? Honesty is the best policy. You're, it's not going to happen. So I, I mean, if I could change that, it'd be something I'd like to change, but I, I have no idea how we'd start changing it. Well, Madam Chair, because he, so you said the city of Box Elder gave him a water tap, the city of Rapid City approved a septic, and now the county's going to say, no, you can't live there? You're going to say you can't have a mobile home there. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Madam Chair, bottom line is maybe the fees need to be high enough to deter people in a certain sense that once you put a house or something that cannot be moved and we're going to end up approving it, you should have to maybe pay a higher fee or something. Right now there is Something's a penalty, isn't there, to get a building permit after the fact? Correct, you pay double. But, so what is the fee for that? It's the square footage of his mobile and then double that, plus each addition has its own building permit mm -hmm. um, and then double that. So it's doubled, so the fees are doubled when you get it after the fact like this? So it's correct. Like thousands of dollars? No, hundreds of dollars. No, it's, yeah, <coughs> hundreds, yes. hundreds. hundreds of dollars. Yeah. And so maybe increasing the, 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 the rather than a two x, it's some other. You're suggesting some larger in, numbered increase when they when they uh, when they fail to get it. The when build the whole home or whole garage. Yeah. Now, if you you didn't have it um, surveyed and stuff happens, that's different. And then you built it over that line or something. That's, you know, surveys are never always correct. But when you literally just put it there and didn't get a built, most people that have a house and different stuff. But like decks or certain sheds, I understand that a little bit more than whole house. You know, or <laughs> there's always circumstances. Like I tell people, if you got three sheds and now you got three more and you didn't get a permit, you got permit for the first three and not the next, you should get a double fine. So. And, and really, surveys are never always correct? No. What? About 10 feet off. Usually. No, surveys just, all surveys do is trace the existing line. Surveys are always correct. Depends on which survey. No, surveys are always correct because all a surveyor is doing is tracing the existing line. All they're doing is verifying that the lines were there. Surveys are always correct. That's if you could find the pins. Madam Chair, sorry. I, I would agree that we should increase the fees. Uh, that would be a totally useless uh, uh, fee because we always uh, waive, it. waive it anyway. <laughs> so it does. So there's no sense even having them at all. Not, not always, Mr. Buzzard. Madam Chair, so if this was applied for when it should have been, would you see have seen any reason to deny it? 
the only no um no the thing no i wouldn't have seen any reason to deny it um what our office has been struggling with is what the definition of dwelling units was um and if it met the dwelling unit definition and then you know if it because it didn't meet the size requirements of our zoning ordinance for a living space because it's a single wide it's not 20 by 20 um, which is why it would have needed a conditional use permit had it been in any other zoning district um, so it would have needed another permit in addition to a regular building permit and that's you know being a PUD having the words of 51 dwelling units it answers those conditions that the PUD speaks to um, and having the minor amendment to allow the single wide, this is taking care of that. So, Madam Chair, yeah, just okay. uh, so so besides besides them not doing the permit like they should have, there's no other issues that you can point out. No, I'm not at this time. No. Okay, Go thank ahead, you. Lori. So dwelling unit is not defined in the PUD. No, it just says dwelling unit, and that's so. That's what the county. That's what we're, you're trying to do is define what a dwelling unit is. Correct. Okay. And it says constructed dwelling units, which a mobile home or a modular home is prefabricated. Um, it's not stick built like a traditional home. Constructed offsite. Exactly, yeah. which is why you needed the minor amendment to allow for the single wide or a modular home or those types of things. And so some PUDs actually define what. You can build there. Correct. There's, it says stick builder. It says not a modular or, or has to be a double wide or whatever. Correct. Okay. PUDs are their, are their own zoning district. Yeah. And so they create it. They and say so what, the way we are on it is if it doesn't say you can do it in a PUD, you can't unless you amend it. Um, okay. If there's no other discussion, I have one question and then one comment. Um, you know, my question is on number four, the condition of the... Um, Condition number four about the fire. Now, I'm assuming that when they approved this PUD, they showed that they had a plan that would work and with adequate fire protection and so on. Is that right? I mean, they complied with condition four. Is that from Jerome? That was from the 2001 plan unit development. Um, I mean, I guess my point is this, that my, and I know that the, not all these lots are occupied, but the way that I see this, there's a whole bunch of little lots, and then there's this large section uh, that's that's there, uh, this large acres, you know, almost 15 acres. Right. Is the, is the, does the fire plan that was approved back when this PUD was approved, does that, is there a fire hydrant? That, there was never a fire, because it says prior to, or, well, okay. Um, this is the other struggle that our office has been having with this amendment. Um, you know, it says 51 dwelling units, which essentially means 51 lots and yes. 10 of those 10 acres reserved for commercial neighborhood commercial uses yes. that necessarily hasn't been developed. Only 2.713 are neighborhood commercial and those are the storage units up at the top yes. corner. Um, but are there any lot, any homes on the, the lots, the small lots that were... There are no small lots created. That's the problem. I see. Okay. There, there are no then. small lots created. That remaining portion to the south is unplatted. I see. Okay. So they never did anything. No. Okay. But so tell me, is there a fire hydrant out there in case there was a problem? I did not see one when I drove up the driveway. So I went... So when I did, conducted my site visit, I went up this driveway right here. Mm -hmm. PJ. Oh, Madam Chair, that's where I was going to. So I say. went here, I went up, How are they gonna put the fire? right here, and turned back around. Uh huh. Do they have a sprinkler system or anything, or we don't require that? I didn't see any of that. There's a nice giant pole for a power line. There's no power lines out there. That's really all I saw. Madam Chair, even in the other areas that we decided to put a moratorium on, do they have enough water pressure fire flow? To put fires out in those areas, let alone that we already know from, I know from being on the fire board that that mobile home is not going to take long before. Right. So what do we, maybe Jerome knows, maybe there's some type of, I don't know. Jerome, maybe you could mm -hmm. tell us 
how does like when we're in the county drome how when people put their mobile homes and different stuff what is their water pressure fire flow like? how do they put it out once the water Jerome Harvey Fire, County County Fire Administrator excuse me for the stuffy head um, I'm not contagious anyway uh, <laughs> you sure? a classic yeah <laughs> I think so anyway. I'm just a classic example of uh, putting the cart before the horse here and not trying to stifle any development or desire to build and prosper in Pennington County. The mobile home that you see here, I, I have not been on the site personally. Um, generally, we look for a 1,000 GPM water flow available minimum for adequate fire suppression. That's a national standard. That's a standard that the city uses, a standard that the county has abided by. Uh, looking at the distance, just judging the distance as he dr drove there and there being no obvious fire hydrant, I would suspect there's no fire hydrant here to get water from, therefore, or the water has to be brought in on wheels. And it's easy to sit there and say that there's not adequate fire protection, they got to bring the water in on wheels, and then we're the ones that the media says, well, why did you bring everything in on wheels? Well, that's what we do. We have to do that. But my suspect, sus without seeing that, there's probably not adequate flows there for that. Trailer houses burn quite quickly. The only adequate way to stop the fire in its tracks is with the sprinkler system. And I know the commission is looking at that. That's a big thing they're gonna have to grapple with. I know there's, there's talks, of, uh, there's some discussions on that on one of the next agenda items. There's never been a multiple fire death in the United States in a properly installed, properly operating sprinkler building. Just hasn't been. Now, buildings, even since I've got into the business, buildings burn much faster than they did before. The amount of plastics um, and other stuff that's brought into the home, the fire just simply, and the um, um, cost cutting that's done as far as normal construction, the buildings burn faster. It's impossible for us to stop everything dead in its tracks. Um, often we try to keep the entire block from burning the ground, and I, I, I say that. Seriously, and we've, we, we do that. We try to keep either this situation, we try to keep a grass fire from going on, affecting other air, uh, buildings in the area, et cetera, would be a good stop for us under this type of winds that we're seeing today, for example. But um, that's something you have to grapple with. Is 1,000 GPM available? I've not been there. I don't know what the hydrant flows are in that area, but I might suspicion that it's not. The only way you're gonna stop that fire protect the structure from further damage, protect the people inside of it is to go with the sprinkler system. And that's something you'll have to grapple with. Madam Chair. But after actually not being on, I'm sorry, ma'am, I'm not actually being on that site. I couldn't specifically tell you, but looking at that distance, that's a considerable distance to put a hose, uh, put a supply line into a working yes, engine. Right. Uh -huh. Even if there was a, if there was, for example, a hydrant of sufficient flows of 1,000 GPM at the intersection of the road there, just gauging, just looking at the map without a known distance, that's a long ways to lay a hose line. That's right. No, I understand. Well, thank you for that information. Yeah. Yes, go ahead, Larry. So um, can I ask you a question? So you, are you saying, are you saying then with the one-inch tap, even if we did, in, could, could he install a sprinkler system? Yeah, I do. Would you excuse me? Just that's okay. <laughs> Because that's what I don't know. It doesn't sound like it, but so it would be a waste to ask him to install a sprinkler yeah, system. As well as because he sure. probably can't get enough flow anyway. I don't know. I'm but. not sure. I just think it's. You know, I'll talk. But I just think it's important to know to understand. I think everyone needs to understand that even though this was a requirement before approval, and that and indeed it was approved, the plan was probably on paper, which was the that was the approved plan, and it never got constructed. So. The fire, you know, the, the fire safety issue that was designed never got built, and you know, so just that's needs a good to, point. Need to make sure we understand it. Go ahead. Jenny yeah, will do uh, with a uh, sprinkler system in a remote, a more remote area like this, and you'll even see it in in um, built-up areas, industrialized areas. Um, you'll see some type of a holding or pressurized system that's put in with it, and the. Uh, using a formula, they determine the amount of water storage they need to have on site to stop the fire at the, in the incipient stage. So the one-inch tap, as far as a home-type sprinkler system, generally doesn't doesn't play as much in is as it would in like in a downtown environment in a in a more of a city and urban-type environment. So this guy would have to construct some kind of a water reservoir. 
Yeah, and I mean, there's prepackaged systems that you that you would want to. It would be a prepackaged system that would cover all of that. Okay, so, and that would cost about how much? I I wouldn't. I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't have any idea. Thousands of dollars. Uh, potentially, yes. Okay. I think generally the number is a couple hundred, a couple thousand. You know, depending upon the size and different things, but you know, it's it's within like one to three thousand to sprinkle a home, something like that. Yeah. New con new construction. I don't know what it takes to retrofit but well, madam chair then maybe that's without him following the directions of following the safety facts that miss kathy said maybe that's sometimes how you do tear people as you make them that's his do penalty. things like that well yeah. it's very spendy too and it's very sad when you have to go out there and there's no for a fireman yeah. and people to um watch places like this that didn't follow directions and then they need to the firemen's help, yeah. and then there's no way that they can they can only bring their trucks in there, and by the distance it is as well. Um, I guess I would listen because if my family lived in that mobile home, yeah. is it worth thousands of dollars? Mm -hmm. It is to me. So, I'm, so I'm Madam listening. Chair, so do you think the county commission, if we require him to provide some kind of a sprinkle system, will uh, will you know approve that? Or will he come to you guys and you guys will waive it? Um, or don't we talk about that here? Um, no, Madam Chair, I would like to see how much they cost and, and see what their alternatives were. And he could come to, PJ could get a hold of him and come to um, talk to the fire administrator about that. So I would at least like that link that to be in there and then he could come and, and visit with Jerome about this. But can could I ask a question? Yes, I'd like to say one thing and then, yes, yes. You know, I think that the, I guess I look at it is that when this PUD, of which this big lot is part of, was approved by the county board, right. there was this expectation that there would be fire protection. I mean, by number four, there was a plan that had to be in place, and but it never got constructed. But the expectation was there would be fire protection. And so, I mean, to me, it's pretty logical that um, that since they didn't build the big system out, of which there's got to be a plan on record someplace for, to require, you know, that in an individual unit is is more or less con it's consistent with the intent of condition four when and the PUD was originally approved. And that was improved. That was approved in 2002. So it's not like you know it was done two months ago. It was years ago. That's right. So I'm listening. I mean, that's my point. Well, it's a good deterrent. Um, no. some, we just talked about that of following directions and. Following and doing what you're supposed to, and when you don't, you're there's consequences. That's right. Go ahead, Amy. Go ahead. Um, so when we're discussing the um, the sprinkler and the water um, that we've just been discussing, and having the are we we asking the applicant to go and run these tests? Or are we asking the um, the person that created the PUD? Because here's the other caveat: he lives in that land unplatted to the south. Mm -hmm. Well, here's, um, here's what, how I would answer that. I think that the, it's, we are asking the resident of this, okay. of this uh, home, mobile home, uh, that's within the PUD to, to go to a contractor and uh, get a, some bids, some quotes, some estimates as to what it would take to put in a sprinkler system in his home. Some type of fire suppressant that's system. Right. That's right. I mean, because he purchased the lot from the guy to the south, and maybe they fight over who did or didn't tell each other what was required. Well, they're well, he's relatives. also the, land, the other landowner. But mm -hmm. well, we could do amendment on the number four. Um, EJ, could we add another one? You could. I was going to recommend we continue this to January. I was talking with the fire administrator, and he said that there's ways to figure out your answers. It's just going to take some time. Well, we could approve it today, and then he would have time, and we could always continue it if Jerome and him didn't figure this out by the commission meeting. It's not tomorrow, right? It'll be two weeks. Well, there is one tomorrow, but this wouldn't go tomorrow. No, it'll be two weeks. I don't know if that's enough time. Well, you could always continue it if he didn't do it by then, but at least it'd be in there, PG, the language for the amendment. Okay. okay. And I was the first. Is the second okay with that? Or was I the second? Oh, I can't remember. I'm not sure. I don't think I seconded this one. Name? Jerry has. Jerry, who? I, I think you did second. Did I second this one? I think so. I think so you. Did I second? 
Well, no, you're a first name. And then oh, Deb oh, okay. was saying, are, okay, okay. are, you, are you okay with that? Uh, but let's just go through, so, so how would the motion read then if we were to have a friendly amendment, as you say, uh, would it be to approve this and adding a condition like number 12 that would require uh, a you know, fire suppressant system in the home? Is that what you're envisioning? Or would you, do you envision redoing <coughs> recommendation or condition four to address the individual, <coughs> individual units rather than the PUD as a whole? Maybe I, okay. Number two, it would be. I'm sorry. I'm. I, the sprinkler system. Look on page. Is still. No, look on page six. You know where four. I'm at. It's condition I'm on four. The wrong one. It's condition four. Condition. Four. I was reading that one, so yeah. I'm sorry. I'm okay. okay. That's okay. Keep going. I think it's and four, right? It was. <laughs> yeah. So what are you thinking, Lori? We should. Well, I think we should. I mean, I I was thinking we should amend. Amend for condition four, four. Okay. to require it, and I I don't know why we would exclude future mm -hmm. <laughs> structures from the PUD. I would think it would be a PUD requirement. Yeah. So the, to provide fire suppression to individual units is does that make I, it makes sense to me? But what do PJ? How do we write it yeah. as number four and add to what number four says? Well, the first concern is if you're writing something that's going to affect the entire PUD, that's the minor amendment's not the place to do it. Yes, that okay. was my yeah. that was my concern, and that's why um, I had kind of made mention earlier in the middle of it of you're working on amend amending the whole PUD. Yes, anyway. yeah. because there is there's items like this, and having a lingering yeah. 51 unit dwelling um, is this really going to happen? Is this not going to happen? How is this going to happen? Um, out in the county, a kind of question mark needs to have a little bit more of an answer. So you would want us to add a condition that just applies to this particular structure, right? It, because it's a minor, it has to. Okay. Yep. It yeah. has to only apply to this lot. Okay. okay. We Which do is, plan on coming back with a major amendment, maybe even introduced by staff. Okay. Yes. Just to clean it up. And, okay. uh, Madam Chair, he's the one that didn't get the building permit and the, followed the rules, so the other ones might do that so okay. um, again it would be probably okay. I would say to this person okay so so you want to so you want an amend uh, you want a motion to add a condition number 12 that requires this particular structure to obtain fire suppression and if that doesn't happen continue it to the next meeting is that how you'd like the motion to go that's f yeah, we're gonna spend two weeks. Jerome's gonna see if he yeah, can gonna work make on... contact, get all yeah. some people, no guarantee. And if that doesn't happen, then we'll, um, can, we can do that all in one motion, continue it then to the next meeting, which would if be If you wanna continue 18th. it, that would just be one motion and be done. If, but no, I mean, but can we make amend, that, can we make it a conditional sort of continuance? It's gonna go to the board either way. No, it's not minors. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Thank you. You're okay. Just think of make the amendment, sister, and I'll second. <laughs> okay. So that's the amended motion I make. Then we add condition 12 to require fire suppression. And if that doesn't get done, then we'll continue it to the next meeting, which is the 18th of December. Correct. Right? Two okay. o'clock. Yep. Yeah, what she said. Okay. So thank you for all the discussion. We have a motion and second. Motion second. Uh, any further discussion? So we vote. Okay, yes, here we I have one quick question. Yeah. So even though you add that in there, are you changing or adding something saying that it's going to be continued to the December? Um, it's conditional. If they don't, if they don't figure out what needs to go in that within two weeks, item number twelve, then it gets continued. Okay, that's what I understand. Okay, okay. and Jerome has the understanding; he'll probably need to help. We keep him busy. All right. So, all in favor Major, of the motion. Uh, oh, does this mean yeah. if we were to continue this, that item 11, which is what this is all about, would would not be approved today? Item 11. Whether you continue it without amending it or amend it with a possible continuation, you're kind of doing the same thing either way. So should we just continue it? Let's just continue. Uh, let's just continue <laughs> agenda item number eight to the next meeting, which is December eighteenth. Okay. So really, that's a substitute. That's motion. what's going to end up happening. I will propose that substitute motion. motion. Okay. So then we need a second. Second. Uh, we have a second. Okay. Discussion. Uh, say that again. Why? Why wouldn't we amend it so it'd be on the next? Well, 
No, it's just a simple. It's not approving this at all. It's the motion is right. to continue to, to just continue it. And this man will not know that that's what we're thinking. Or you guys, you guys will talk to him. He will he'll know. know. Okay. He'll know. Thank you. He'll know. Okay. And he's got to get the information that yes. you guys are asking for anyway. So. Okay. So that probably yes. makes more sense yeah. to continue. It's cleaner. It's okay. cleaner. Got so it. by continuing it, excuse me, Madam Chair, yeah, by continuing ahead. it, you're going to just notify him that this needs to happen. I'm, I'm still a bit confused. Well, well, yeah. So go ahead. Because you guys continue it, we still take the points and then everything that's just been discussed at this meeting we take it back to our offices we have the meetings with the applicants we address the points of concern we get all the information and then we hopefully address them gather the information and re present them with any findings here well, we work with the applicant to yes. get it done yeah. it sounds like we're convoluting two things we're here for the minor amendment condition 11 to allow this mobile home but we see some other issues which appear to me is this was approved back in 2002, right? Oh, um, one, yeah. But so, you could amend it. So, t so now would be an appropriate time to amend it, amend it rather than just to approve this new condition and then come back to it to deal with these other issues of fire suppression separately? That's what I'm wondering if. There are the two. I understand what you're saying. So the point of continuing it would be to potentially address a condition 12 to do fire suppression within that own single wide on that own lot. That would be the point of that. If I'm understanding correctly, so, that would be the point of continuing it to allow that and to work with Jerome. And so, what would you, we would be continuing is the minor yeah. amendment. Correct. Yes. And you're, then we would also go back and do yes. The there's major a major amendment to address the whole plan UD. unit development and get that acquired for the whole plan unit development. Why? Sorry. <laughs> it, it is our is, is our approval of condition 11 to allow this mobile home contingent on the fire suppression issue is that where we're trying well, the, to go with this the, the, the motion the, the substitute motion that's on the floor is just to continue the entire item for oh, two okay. weeks okay, okay. Uh, madam chair I understand where you so the PUD is for all of it and that wasn't our attention mm -hmm. it was for the minor plan so that he's right so on number if we put a number 12 it wouldn't be on that all we're doing is because we don't want to do it on the PUD every unit that's in there we're doing it with this guy because he put he didn't follow the PUD and he needs to do something for the fire suppression so um, again you want to put this on the minor plant you'd put that condition but you wouldn't put it on the PUD you can't at this level because it's a minor and it only you can only address that one lot and that one structure. It's a minor, not a major. <laughs> okay. It's a lovely plant unit development. So My major amendments require a different type of advertising yes. and yeah. two meetings instead of one. Yes. So, Madam Chair, just so I understand that we're there's going to be two actions. This is the minor PUD amendment, and later we'll see a major PUD amendment for the entire PUD. Correct. Yes. To clean it up. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There's a lot of the subdivisions in the county that have this. There was a great idea 15, 20 years ago that are affecting what's happening now. Okay. In Europe, they're called ghost subdivisions. In America, they're called zombie subdivisions. <laughs> they're there, but they affect things around it because of this type of incident. I mean, there's conditions in here that don't apply. Yeah. And if they want to change it, change it. But it's affecting everything else around it. He agreed to all of it except. Well, he agreed to all of it. I'm sorry? Didn't he agree to, for this minor to agree to everything that was done before. I don't think he's, comp uh, I know he's got a copy of this. I don't know if he's sent an email or called to object okay. to anything. It's all good. <laughs> all right, well, let's take a vote here. Uh, so the, um, we have a amendment on the floor seconded uh, to continue this for two weeks for t with the minor, the, the minor PUD amendment for two weeks. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay, Thank moving you on to nine. Item nine. All right, number nine is preliminary plat 1744 and subdivision regulation variant 1714 for Sunset Ranch. This was before you as a layout plat and is coming before you again as a preliminary plat. So instead of going through the two step process, the layout plat and the minor plat, they're doing a three step because of the number of lots they have. So they've seen the, lim the layout, this is the preliminary, and then there'll be a final plat. Um, or plats because they could do them one lot at a time over a course of a period.
period, or they could do it all at once, but that's an administrative approval for the final plat. So once the Planning Commission, if you approve the preliminary today, it will go before the board, and unless there's any major decision, um, any major concern after that, it won't be back before either body unless we deem it necessary, just so you know going forward. So the applicant went back and made some of the recommended changes that were required to subdivide five existing lots into just 10 existing lots. They did make some minor changes, um, which they are allowed to do between the layout plat process and the uh, preliminary plat process. Some of those changes were, uh, they, they changed the acreage on some of the properties. They put in uh, easements for the electrical transmission line, um, dedicating more right away, taking away some right away. Um, the major thing that they did is they added common lot 16R, which is one of the requirements they have to do for their PUD to have upwards of 80 acres. So they're maintaining that at this time. So that's the biggest chunk of acreage and change with this with this lot. Because if they didn't do it here um, and through the planning process, they'd have to do a recorded exhibit at the register of deed. So this is just getting it all done at the same time. The biggest concern that uh, came back with this, um, not the biggest, but one of the concerns that came back with this from the interdepartmental review was from the road district, wanted to know who was going to main, who was responsible for looking at the road designs and improving the road and checking the road. So if you were to look at what they're proposing, which is basically this section right here, that's going to be the road district responsibility. The area here in blue, 156, that's highways responsibility. So um, the representative from the road district who asked that question is aware that the road district is responsible f to keep up and to maintain and inspect the proposed road from the from the developer also that road needs to be named so that's a, something that will have to happen before the final plat process comes through um, that came back from our addressing coordinator also through 911 um, the, the big thing that kept this going um, and created a lot of um, work for us and for Jerome and for some Rapid City Fire personnel was the fire flows in the area. Um, that actually ended up getting checked um, and it was, if I use the wrong word, borderline. Um, it just barely meets or exceeds it just over the limit. And if you <coughs> consider, you know, like people taking showers or doing laundry or watering the lawn, that actually may go below the minimum. So the recommendation from the fire administrator is to put fire sprinkler systems in all new construction um, on, a, on these new lots. And that's including like the overhang of the buildings, uh, attached garages, or any other structures that's over 3,600 square feet. Um, but we're asking for any new structure. To have. Um, and the fire administrator's comments are in your packet. Madam Chair, did this um, developer agree to that? I only heard back from the, from the agent. Um, they have concerns about it. They don't want to do it. Um, but the last I heard is he just wanted to know why. And they wanted to know where in our ordinance it was, and it's in our subdivision regulation variants. Um, after I sent them that email, I haven't heard back from them. Um, I'm kind of surprised they're not here this morning, but again, this will go before the board, so maybe that's where they want to plead their case. Um, other than that, it's, we're looking at increasing density in the area by five additional lots. And um, other than that, staff would recommend approval of preliminary. Oh, sorry, let me go back one. They also requested a subdivision regulation variance to waive uh, the requirement for percolation tests and soil profile hole information for the proposed lots. Staff, on the, uh, staff and environmental planning staff doesn't have any objection to that. So two motions. The first would be staff recommend approval of subdivision regulation variance 1714 to waive the requirements for percolation tests and so and soil profile hole information <coughs> on the proposed lots of Sunset Ranch. Any other questions for PJ? I'll make a motion. Okay. Motion's been made. Second? Second. Second. Uh, any discussion? Can I ask a question? Um, I noted in your um, in the report from the fire coordinator that um, it talks about, especially during summer months, um, they'll be tied on water on water flows. It, is it appropriate to to like suggest a restriction? Because I know we've run into that concern in other neighborhoods where maybe they shouldn't be watering their lawns, or isn't that appropriate? 
we've done it on others. Um, but I don't know how it would really be enforced. Yeah. Um, HOAs will usually have that. I don't know if this one has one of those, but even when they do have it in their covenants, they don't always enforce it, and they try to have the county enforce them. So it's more appropriate for a covenant then? I'm not, legally, I don't know. Um, we could put it in as a suggestion. I don't know how it would really be enforced. And if we okay. did do it, it would only be for these 10 lots. lots. Okay. All right. Thanks. Um, so I have a question. What's the, what's the source of water for this area? Is it their own well? Is it, where are they getting their water from? I don't know. You don't know. Jerome, do you know? They, they never provided us with that. We just did the uh, flow testing on the out, the uh, fire hydrants themselves. Wow. They, uh, Meeting that he's at the Board of Commissioners, he indicated he had 165,000 gallons on standby or in his reservoir. We did see the uh, testing was done at two different times to so two different levels in the tank. Uh, some of the other people that, just, um, that I talked with indicated they thought he had somewhere in that neighborhood, but we never got an exact letter from him saying this is the amount of water that I have. Uh -huh. What was the water pressure of fire flow? <clears throat> the fire flow? The fire flow was between um, the two different days and the two different levels fluctuated between 1,200 to 1,300 gallons per minute. Now, when you're figuring fire flows out, that sounds like, wow, that's really great. We'll meet the 1,000 GPM requirement. The issue with that is, and the standards take into consideration of that is, Somebody's always flushing a toilet. Somebody's always washing dishes. Somebody's always doing something, especially in an area of that size. There's always going to be demand on the system. And as people, you know, one of the examples was watering of the lawns, et cetera. That's going to pull down on that fire flow and will take away from what's available at the hydrant itself. So you measured it. Sorry, Commander. Okay. So you measured it without the, the, the other lots coming in. So doesn't that take down that? Yeah, it, it, it takes in that so your 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 margin for error on this because you only have twelve to thirteen hundred GPM. It pencils <laughs> right at, you know, it, it pencils right at nine hundred ninety nine to a thousand GPM. You're right at that thousand GPM, and the standard takes that into consideration. So you're really right on borderline having that thousand GPM available. So my question is, um, <clears throat> do you believe with the um, lots he's adding that it's going to need sprinkler or do you think it has enough water pressure fire flow it it papers out as having enough available there okay madam chairman yes. this is all very important and i think that we need to do it but i thought my motion was about uh, a variance to our subdivision standards about uh, the percolation test it, i mean and now we're into something totally different than that. Uh, that's, you're, you're absolutely right. There's two motions here. The first one that, that uh, Commissioner Buscrew made was to just waive those requirements. Uh -huh, so we'll ma he'll manage that, and then we'll move to the other one, which would be to approve Sorry. this um, the preliminary plat. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, okay. Mr. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be a stickler. Oh, that I, I appreciate that. I appreciate you're that. Good. Keeping I us on track. And I didn't know there was two different things on there, yeah. so I apologize. Okay. So am I right on this, that... Right now, the first motion is just the waiving of these of these uh, requirements. So, the subregs, percolation based. Yeah. Percolation. Yep. Okay. So we've got a motion and a second. So all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Same sign. Okay. That motion is carried. And the second motion then would be to approve. Um, and these, by the way, are. Um, I can handle that if you'd like. These motions are laid out for us someplace. Where are they? Page 15 of 17. Yeah. The recommendation would be to approve preliminary plat 1744 with 19, 19 conditions. conditions. Okay. Um, specifically noting that conditions 1, 2, and 3 address fire mitigation and the fire sprinkling right. sprinkler okay. system. All right. So on, regarding that recommendation to approve this preliminary plat with these conditions, do we have a motion for approval? Yeah, I'll move for approval of preliminary plat uh, PL 1744 with 19 conditions. Okay, I'll have a second. Anybody? Can I hear a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Sammy. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll have a vote. All in favor of uh, that uh, recommendation, um, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carried. Okay. Thank you. We're done with Thank the, you, Jerome, uh, for your time.
items. So now number 10, which is the county board report. The Board of Commissioners will hear today's recommendations from the Planning Commission at their Tuesday, December 5th board meeting. Is that right? Yeah. 18th. Which is 19th. 19th? That's oh, sorry, right. 18th is ours. I apologize for that. Okay, so that's the, the fifth should be changed to the 19th <coughs> as it's right. written here. Correct. Okay, okay um, there's no, no one from the public here. So we're down to 12 items from the staff. Building permit report is one of them. And those are passed out. So um, the building per permit report uh, is before you. And we're up 9% uh, over this time last year. We took in 665 building permits um, up through uh, this and 608 up to last year. Single family homes, the single um, the stick built houses are up 23% over last year. We took in 85 um, so far this year, six, and um, that's a lot. Um, it was kind of down for a while there. Um, a lot of the other numbers where you see the, the 100 plus or the 100, that's, a lot of that has to do with when we reconfigured the categorizing for all the uh, building permits that we have. So those numbers are kind of off. But come um, after January, they'll kind of all even out all the, and give you a truer picture. Um, do, 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 do. So that's all I have for that one. But I do have one more item under staff. Okay. Um, is just not forget in an hour and a half we have the holiday luncheon upstairs. Uh, yeah. Don't forget lunch. So, That's always eat. important. You came through, you came here in the weather, might as well stay and have <laughs> something right. to eat. So. so an hour and a half. So All right. 11 30. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, thank uh, you. Nothing any, further. Any items from the members here? Just a reminder that I'll be participating via <laughs> Skype January and February, and I talk to you, Joan. Yep. Thanks for it, planning commissioners, and what you do for us. Very good questions. I always enjoy sitting here Listen. To, uh, um, the discussion and Miss Lori, I still need to talk to you about those surveys. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But thank you for your information. It's always a good discussion. And Sunny, you have some really good questions as well. So, um, get a cool. And these guys um, do a lot of work for us to make Are it you easy contagious? for our judge. What? <laughs> Are you contagious? Definitely, that's why my sonny is citizen. Because <laughs> Jeremy said he wasn't. That's actually, why I wondered. <laughs> actually, I don't think so, but I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just yeah, I just wanted to thank Commissioner Hadcock again for coming in last minute. I appreciate it. It's all good. Thank you. And then just fun. one more plug for our planning department. Um, a couple of things that you were talking about today, two words, building codes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. No other business uh, before us. Uh, I have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Happy holidays, Happy holidays. Kids. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.